Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. We really appreciate you watching these videos. We have a bunch of fun making them. Today, we're gonna to talk about when and where to find steelhead in the Midwest, specifically the Great Lakes. If you don't know me yet, my name is Matt. I'm the manager of the Northern Angler here in Traverse City, Michigan. We're a small independent fly shop really focused on getting customers confident, comfortable, and right to rock on the water and at the vise. So if you're a Midwest angler, think about hitting that subscribe button. You'll get a notification every time we have a new video or a new tip or tying video, any of that stuff. And after this video, if you liked the info we have, if it helped, think about hitting the thumbs up button. It'll help us out and help other people find these videos as well. Okay, like I mentioned, we'll be talking about when and where to find Great Lakes Steelhead. But I think we need to do a little Tarantino on this. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna go from the back to the front. We're gonna talk about where to find Great Lakes Steelhead first. Any river, stream, creek, pretty much any moving little body of water that empties out into a Great Lake. So go through them with me. Here's Holmes, remember the acronym, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Every one of these has populations of steelhead. Almost every little tiny little spot that these fish can get into, they usually end up in, which is really cool. But make sure you're fishing in legal waters that are open for the season. Right now, it's mid-October and we're past the trout season, which in this state means all the smaller bodies of water close so that fish can reproduce unmolested, unbothered. It's just too easy to go in and net them or get them, whatever. So think about that. Stay legal, everyone. For more information on your local area, be sure to reach out to the local experts. If you have a fly shop near you, support them. If you have even a tackle shop or a bait shop, whatever you have, they're going to have the best knowledge for your area. Local always know best. Now let's move on to when we can find these fish available to us as fly anglers specifically. If you wanted to catch these fish year round, you could probably do that. If you have the means and the motivation, go for it. We'd actually love to hear about that. If you've caught a fish every month of the year, that'd be kind of a cool challenge. Today though, we're gonna cover specifically the fall run, the winter run, and the spring run, and talk maybe a little bit about those skimania you've heard about as well. First, let's give you a little primer on the life cycle of steelhead. What is a steelhead, by the way? Steelhead is a rainbow trout that is born in a river that spends the majority of its life out in a large body of water, in our case, the Great Lakes, and eventually they return to spawn and reproduce in the rivers they were actually born in, which is pretty darn cool. Once these fish are born in the rivers, they tend to stay a little while. Depending on the river, depending on you know a lot of variables, fish can stay in the river for one to three years before they start returning back to the lake. And that's when they really bulk up. They get big. They have all this food forage available to them. And that's why average Great Lakes fish average from four up to 10 pounds. Now, we're particularly lucky in Michigan. We get some bigger fish than that. Every year we see fish that push 20 pounds. It's really impressive. They measure out to even around 36 inches. That's a big, fish to haul in and it's a lot of fun. The first group we're gonna talk about is the fall run fish. These fish tend to follow up after our salmon runs. Here we have coho and king salmon that enter our rivers in August, September, and a little bit into October. It fluctuates every year. But past that, we start to see steelhead show up and that's when the fun really begins. There's a lot of theories about why these fish show up in the fall. They don't spawn until the spring. So we have to wonder, is it because these salmon are dropping eggs in the rivers and there's tons of free protein out there? I mean, think of it. What if there was a taco stand just giving away free tacos? Wouldn't you be there? I'd be there. Despite that easy conclusion, we don't know if that's actually the truth. The fish that came over from the West Coast were really a blend of different fish. So it might just be that They've always gone in the fall and they're genetically programmed to show up in our rivers in the fall. Either way, it's a blast to have them in the fall, especially when the leaves are changing. It's beautiful. You got mist coming up off the water and bright chrome fish jumping <laughs> and your line is screaming. It's a riot. Beyond salmon dropping eggs in our rivers and kind of ringing the dinner bell for these steelhead, 
there's two other factors we really pay attention to when starting to look at the fall calendars. And these are really important if you're starting to plan a trip or you're looking ahead, the first thing is gonna be precipitation. Our fall rains really help cool the river water down. That's really enticing to these fish. They've had total control over the temperature just by where they are in the lake. So bringing those temperatures down makes it more comfortable and enticing for those fish to enter the rivers. The second thing, at least for northern Michigan, is a north wind. That wind really tends to push fish up the rivers beyond just pooling up around the river mouths where they, they tend to stage, we call it. And you'll see a lot of charter boats out there just running the rounds because they kind of are they're waiting for the time. It's like double dutch or something. You gotta pick the right time to go. Now, most of our fall fish stick around. They winter over, they wait for the spring and that large push of fish that are coming in to spawn. However, once the temperatures start to drop down, you know, beyond 40 degrees, things slow down. But we have one really cool thing that happens. We're, we're really lucky here in the Midwest to actually get a run of winter fish as well. Now this tends to be much more of a trickle. It's less of a big push like we see in the fall with those precipitation and wind events. Now there's no real discernible physical difference between a winter fish and a fall fish. It's just genetic programming when these fish will show up in the system. But you can usually tell because on a cold winter day, you can catch a dime bright steelhead. Most of our fall fish will eventually what we call color up. They kind of adapt more of a natural rainbow trout looking color pattern. In Northern Michigan and throughout the Midwest, February is kind of that last big, cold, hard winter month. We always get, you know, a few snowstorms in April and even into March. It always happens every year we get one. Once we get to March, things really start to change here. Things really start to feel like we're finally coming out of the grips of winter and I think the fish start to pay attention to that too. Spring is usually when we see the largest pushes of fish. I mean big numbers coming in all at once. And once the water temperature reaches around 40 degrees or so, these fish start to really focus on digging reds, that is clearing gravel and preparing for the spawn. Now, as temperatures continue to rise up to about 50 degrees, 55 degrees, more and more fish will be spawning. And we really encourage everyone to leave spawning fish alone. Usually they're very visible. It's easy to see them on the gravel. That If you can see the gravel, you can probably see fish sitting on it. We'd encourage you instead to fish behind that gravel. A lot of times you can find really nice brown trout or even other steelhead sitting there and staging and waiting for the right time to hit the gravel. April is really the biggest month for spring steelhead. March can be a total X factor here in Michigan and the Midwest. We have years that March is great. You got people walking around in flip flops and shorts and t-shirts by the end. Some years we're still bundled up in puffies. We got the furnace cranked all the way up. So April tends to be the most reliable month for spring steelheading. Once you get to the end of April, most of those fish have spawned out. There's always a few left over, and you can actually start to target what we call drop back fish. Fish that have spawned out that are trying to put on more mass. If you're really dedicated, you can find some really aggressive fish dropping slowly back towards the big lake. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is Scamania strain steelhead. Some people call them scams, otherwise known as summer run steelhead. It's kind of cool. We get these fish in July and August. The numbers are nowhere near what we see in the fall and the spring. The one real downside to targeting summer run steelhead is catch and release. The water temperatures where you can target these fish, and remember July and August, tend to be very warm. That means if you hook a fish, play it for very long, land it, it's going to be very difficult to release that fish and have it survive. You can do it. We're not going to say that you need to catch and release or keep these fish. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to educate. It is your decision, but please make informed decisions. Spend time, learn about the fishery, learn about the rivers. Again, I know I talked earlier about getting information from local resources, whether it be a fly shop, whether it be your DNR, whoever it is, have a conversation, be an informed angler. Let's wrap this up because I know I've talked a lot. I hope some of this information was helpful for you. If it was, think about hitting that like button down below. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for our next video about steelhead. We're going to be talking about three proven techniques for targeting steelhead throughout the year.
Hope to see you all again soon out on the water or in the shop.